U.S. Farm Report is brought to you by Pioneer. Looking for the next big yield breakthrough? Then look to Pioneer. By combining industry-leading R&D with rigorous local testing, what's next happens here at Pioneer. Dwayne Bussey and Tommy Grossafi joining us again on the show. Dwayne, wheat, a lot of interest in wheat right now. Now that we see this grain deal between um, uh, Ukraine and, and, and Russia and, and seeing that UN grain deal, that will be extended. Is there a lot of excitement in wheat? What is going to take these, these wheat prices to move upward? I think it's going to take some time, <laughs> time. Honestly, I think right now we're looking at kind of a bearish market and a market that will really struggle to rally until maybe next spring. Um, we've got a winter wheat crop in the U.S. that is in very poor condition right now. And you get up to my area, some of it just didn't even germ. So it'll actually be probably just under in the spring. So I think it's going to take some time to get a bullish story in that wheat market yet. You know, next spring, if, if we don't raise the crop here, it still becomes a bullish thing. But like to Tommy's point in the last segment, you know, it's it's at good prices. And if you're planning on planting more wheat because of these high prices, you better take some action, too. I mean, when you look at some of these outside markets, I mean, you look at how inflation and um, crude oil prices and just everything that's impacting our commodities here in agriculture. What are the signals that you're watching and what is it telling you about commodity prices, not only in the months ahead, but as we head into 2023? Uh, great question. Well, thank you that we have a futures market and we can trade crude oil for multiple years. The, the commodities markets are telling us or at least the government, the Federal Reserve is telling us they are going to do what it takes to smash inflation. So looking back at a CPI number or PPI number from the last week or a few weeks, inflation starting to come down, a couple components of inflation, obviously wage inflation, but price inflation of goods. And uh, you're starting to see the whole commodity uh, oh, backlog lessen up. The uh, ports in LA, said they had their slowest month in October in 12 years. So remember a year ago when there was just hundreds of ships backlogged. So the backlog of commodities is stopping. If the Fed, listen to the Fed, if they truly want to squash inflation, that is not bullish commodity prices. So this mega bull market of 27, 28 months very well may have already ended and we don't know it yet, or it is on the verge of ending, of course, without a severe weather problem in South America. So keep an eye on lower commodity prices for multiple years, looking at the future mark, the futures market, these 22, 23 and 24 corn, the price is going lower every year. Same thing in beans. Well, the fear and the talk of a recession has a big impact on, on, on meats. And when you look at cattle, I mean, you look at this cash cattle trade and packers are definitely bidding up right now, Dwayne, why is that? And do you think those strong bids will continue? Yeah, I think they will continue. I think packers are actually paying up for cash cattle because of what they see in the future. I think they see a fairly tight supply and I think they see a higher market, which, you know, kind of counteracts the if we're going into a recession in 23. But, you know, maybe it's every recession is a little bit different than the past one. But, you know, we liquidated a lot of herds here in the last couple of years, at least the size of the herds in the upper Midwest. Montana's down sharply, Texas, the Southern Plains. We've had this cattle on feeder port that's been higher until recently because we've been bringing more cattle in all the time. But now, you know, if we start to get some rains in 23 and people want to build these herds back up, you know, then they'll hold heifers back and this market will really take off. I think packers are going to keep paying up because I, I think demand's very strong and I think export demand will be good in 23 as well. Tommy, you mentioned watch the Fed and keeping a close eye on that. But which commodity of all the commodities that you're trading do you think poses the biggest risk? Oh, that's a tough question. I didn't know there'd be hard questions on this segment. Uh, I like to blend three. So I'm going to give you a little backward act, uh, answer. Uh, add the price of corn plus the price of beans plus the price of wheat. Put that in one chart and make that your own uh, North America index. So the price of corn, wheat, and beans blended. Uh, some of them could have a strong day, some day, a weekday, the others. But corn plus wheat plus beans, I believe, is starting to trend down. King corn in the end time. It seems to what uh, determine where acres go in the United States. Watch yeah, corn. Definitely. And Dwayne, which commodity do you think is at risk the most? I, I love what Tommy said there. That's a neat way to look at it when you add those three together. But, you know, we're tight for a reason because of our old crop stocks, which are just recently new crop, are still tight. And we still need to plant this crop next year. We need to gain some acres from my area, the prevent plant area. And, Weather's still king out there, so I, I'm not quite the bear yet, but I do agree with Tommy that the year uh, 2023 will probably be the year of a hedger. 
All right, thanks. We need to take a quick break, and then we'll have much more right here on U.S. Farm Report. Farmer to Farmer, the Conservation at Work video series features real stories, real successes, real quick. See what's possible at farmers.gov slash conservation. 